there's a new determination in St. Louis sparked by rejuvenated veteran quarterback Neil Lomax. And today, they take their new show on the road. Good afternoon, everyone. We are at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. It's the home opener for the Chargers. They lost their first game, and the Cardinals visit here with a win under their belts. It's a typically beautiful afternoon here in San Diego. 53,000 are on hand. Temperature 76, really hot down on the playing field and in the sunlight. And this should be a dandy affair. I'm Jack Buck, and a pleasure to work with Will McDonough, longtime columnist of the Boston Globe, trying something new here in the booth today, and we're going to make it work. Hey, listen, Jack, I hope you are strong. I know you've broken in some of the greatest names in this game, you know, Theismann and Dawson and Unitas, but I think trying to get a sports writer in here today is going to be the ultimate test for you. We shall have some fun, and you folks will benefit from Will's knowledge. Meanwhile, we visited with both of these teams yesterday, and they are rather similar in their approach to this game. Well, Jack, they really mirror one another. You know, you talk to the coaches in these two teams, and they will tell you this. We're alike. On offense, we like to throw the ball. We have the quarterbacks that can throw the ball. On defense, we like to attack. We like to pass rush. Therefore, they come to the conclusion that this game will be decided on the turnovers. They tell us the team that gets the most turnovers and makes the fewest mistakes will win this game. So hold on. We'll find out if they're right or not. We'll find out about the St. Louis offense first of all. They have won the toss and they will recede. Vince Abbott will be the kickoff man for San Diego. He's a newcomer and new in this job. By the way, while we have a moment here, they had a solidarity handshake between these two clubs just before the coin toss with regard to the strike, and there's nobody any more knowledgeable about that strike situation than Will McDonough. By Sikahema is deep, along with Derek McAdoo. There's Sikahema, who made his mark felt last year in his first year in the National Football League. Abbott has done a good job in the new role for the San Diego club. And away we go. We hope you enjoy it. A line drive towards Sikahema. Took it on the five. East to the 10, 15, 20. And out to the 25. And that's where Neil Lomax and company will go. And he was tackled by Pete Holohan, the tight end for the Chargers. A 21 yard kickoff return by Sikahema. Neil quarterback. Neil Lomax will be the quarterback. And here's the defense of San Diego. They use a three man front. Lee Williams, a good pass rusher. Mike Charles in the middle and Terry Unrein. Linebackers Billy Ray Smith, Gary Plummer, Thomas Benson, and the newcomer Chip Banks over from Cleveland. Gilbert, Danny Walters on the corners. Martin Bayless and Ben C. Glenn are the safety men. And here is the give to Mitchell, and he is dropped for a loss of about four. There was nothing there for Stump, and he ran into Mike Charles, the nose guard. And that's a sluggish start and a four yard loss. Billy Ray Smith and Mike Charles were the tacklers. Here's the offense for the Cardinals with Lomax, Stump Mitchell, and Earl Farrell, J.T. Smith, and Roy Green. The offensive line, Louise Sharp, Joe Bostic, Derek Kennard starting at center. Lance Smith, Tootie Robbins, and Jay Novacek is the tight end in at second and 14. Roy Green is to the right. Farrell's in motion. The running play to Mitchell. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and long coming up. Third down and 11. And Will McDonough, I know that you dislike those baseball diamonds on the playing field, and that might have bothered Mitchell on the first yeah, carry yeah. of the day. Yeah, Jack, players dislike them because you can't get any traction on the dirt. Whether you wear cleats or whether you wear some other type of a shoe, you really can't get into the dirt to make good cuts. And it looked as though on, on both those plays, Mitchell had a, tr a tough time trying to cut and get back up in the area where he wanted to go. The third wide receiver is Don Holmes. J.T. Smith and Roy Green are to the right. It's third down and 11. It's a straight four-man rush. Lomax wings it outside. It's caught by the tight end, Novacek, short of a first down. And St. Louis will have to punt. The tackler was Gil Bird, who came up from the corner. And pretty good defense by San Diego. They played it nice and loose and made the tackle when they had to. Yeah, Jack, I think San Diego has to be a little bit heartened by their first series in defense because they have great respect for the Cardinals. And they're really concerned about their own backfield. The Chargers don't think they have great defensive backs. So anytime they can play everything in front of them, keep uh, St. Louis from a first down, they'll be happy with it. 
Now Greg Cater has to be sure of his footing there on the baseball portion. Michael Morris will snap the ball and the deep man at Lionel James inside his 25 a pretty good rush is put on Cater got it away coverage is only so so as James took it on the 19 and he goes outside this is trouble for the Cardinals the kicker is back there nobody's going to get him now well, let me let me tell you why this is incredible Jack because the Chargers try to block the kick. They had no blockers back there. James was back there all alone. Normally a coach tells a guy, when we get a punt rush on, we're trying to block it, you just fair catch it or you go down. But he catches the ball with no blockers, he returns it all away. With a 47-yard punt, it was a little bit uh, beyond the coverage of the Cardinals. Yeah. And then an 81-yard return for a score the first time San Diego got a hold of the ball and it's 6-0. And the extra point attempt will be forthcoming by Vince Abbott, who kicked off moments ago. One of the officials was run over. That's the umpire. And he had to go to the bench for treatment. Indy Ansich is the umpire. He was hurt on the play. They continue on with Mojenko holding the ball. The center is Dennis McKnight. A shocking start for Bull. A high snap, and the punter did a good job of getting it down. That's Mojienko, and that makes it seven to nothing. 12:25 left in the quarter. An 81-yard punt return by Lionel James. When you're in the market for an imported luxury sedan, you're in among cars costing serious, very serious money. And just when there seems no end, Mitsubishi introduces the new Galant Sigma with a wealth of features including 3-liter V6 power and ABS anti-lock braking, all for well under $20,000. The new Galant Sigma, a serious luxury sedan at a price that's not too serious. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. Most men know I model swimsuits for a famous sports magazine. No one knows what beer I drink. Well, it's not a lie. For obvious reasons, I like it because it's less filling. But most of all, I like it because it tastes great. As for men, <laughs> sometimes I just don't understand it. I think these guys have never seen a girl with a middle life before. <laughs> oh. For a perfect 10, there's only one light beer. Miller Lite. I know I need life insurance, but I hate spending money on something I hope I'll never use and won't be around to enjoy if it ever is used. Leave it to the good hands, people. Allstate has life insurance that pays you for living. Allstate Universal Life. It protects your family if you die, and it can provide competitive earnings for your retirement. So, my family's set if I'm gone, and I'm in the money if I stick around. <laughs> I think I'll stick around. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Here's James catching the ball. What a great individual effort. Now, they had the punt block on, so really, he really has no blocker. See, they arrive late. Now he turns it upfield and gets to the outside. All the St. Louis players are trapped inside. Watch the good block coming up right in front of him from number 44. And now here's the ensuing kickoff, and it's fumbled and downed in the end zone by Sikahema. will come out to the 20-yard line. And the Cardinals get the ball for the second time. I trace their problems to the very sluggish first series when they had the ball. Well, they didn't do very much. Well, they're not off to a great start here, Jack. And I think they felt coaching-wise, from talking to Gene Stallings last night before the game, that they would get off to a good start. They, they had a lot of good things in their game plan, and they might jump on San Diego quickly. And now we've seen just the reverse. San Diego was a favorite coming into the game by something less than a touchdown. The ball rests at the Cardinal 20-yard line with Farrell and Mitchell. Green and Smith both to the right. Novacek the tight end on the left side. And a first down pass swung out here. It's a screen. And Mitchell is good for about four yards, and that's all, as they faded it very well. But their linebacker, Chip Banks, who is bound to help this club if he can stay happy out here. Well, Chip Banks is the guy they made the big trade for in the offseason. They needed a guy who they said was like a Lawrence Taylor for the Giants or an Andre Tippett from New England, a guy that could pass rush, a guy that would be a force, a guy that would give them an identity and defense. 
And Banks, they think, is that type of a guy. He's number 56, and you'll see a lot of him here this afternoon. Second down and six for the Cards. Al Farrell is off on a wing and sets up as the right wing, and Lomax almost fumbled a snap, zings it outside, and it's batted down by the linebacker intended for Farrell. And the linebacker, Thomas Benson, just tipped the ball. It's third and six. Lomax had a nice touch on that, but Benson got to it. Well, Benson's not known as a great cover guy, which is probably why St. Louis ran out of that formation. He's an inside linebacker. He came to camp 40 days late. They just activated him for this game. It looked like they wanted to get in a man-to-man -man situation. They had the situation, but he just barely tipped the ball and made the play. Daniel Hunter is the extra defensive back for the Chargers. Lomax on third down out of the shotgun. Low snap, big trouble. And it is recovered by San Diego. Well, that happens frequently on the uh, shotgun formation. There are no flags. San Diego gets the ball, and the Cardinals are headed for deep trouble as Billy Ray Smith came away with it. Well, the Cardinals are a little unglued here in the opening minutes, Jack. They just haven't settled down. It seems like they're getting beat off the ball at every snap. San Diego's defense right now appears much quicker at the start of every play, and St. Louis is having a tough time trying to handle that. Derek Kennard had snapped the ball. It went low, and San Diego takes over at the St. Louis 15-yard line. They could make it 14 to nothing in a blink. With Fouts at the controls, straight ahead is the running back, Spencer. And he is good for about three. A four-yard gain, as it turns out, second and six to the 11, and Noga was there to make the tackle. Well, the good thing, Jack, is that the umpire has returned to the field. We saw him on the bench. It looked as though his ankle was uh, bothering him. They had a little bit of a trait, but now he's back up there. And second down and six for the Chargers at the Cardinal 11. And the Cardinals would love to get that ball back. James is running right. Turns up here. Good blocking. Taken down inside the five-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Carl Carter made that tackle. For those of you who just watched the Bears beat Tampa Bay 20 to 3, welcome to San Diego. And we have a lightning start here. The ball is first and goal at the Cardinal four yard line, and Anderson trying to get in the end zone, loses the yard. We have played five minutes here in the first quarter, and we had a punt return moments ago of 81 yards by Lionel James. St. Louis took the opening kickoff, did very little on three downs, had to punt. James ran it back 81 yards, and then as the Cardinals were faced on a third down play they got a bad snap from center in the shotgun formation and the fumble was recovered by Billy Ray Smith and now we have another first down a moment ago and second goal from the five for the Chargers who are trying to make it 14 to nothing there's Anderson touchdown. Gary Anderson slid through there and very quickly it is 13 to nothing in the first five and a half minutes of the game Will McDonough is Alongside, I'm Jack Buck, and this is a shocker. Yeah, the Cardinals have been caught sleeping here. They haven't, they're not really into the game yet, Jack. They haven't made one play so far, either on offense or defense. And right now, San Diego has it all its own way. I want to tell the audience from the Tampa Bay Chicago game that before the coin toss, they had a complete solidarity handshake at the middle of the field between these two teams. The extra point by Vince Abbott is good again. And the Cardinals visiting here have spotted the Chargers 14 points in the first five and a half minutes of the game. You're working on your American dream because you want it to last forever. And if something is starting to show the years, you want to make it better. Give your home new Anderson windows, because when it comes to your home, nothing but the best will do. Come home to quality. Come home to Anderson. Where can you go to buy Anderson windows? Call 1-800-255-2550.
better value? Absolutely. Our new Tandy 1000HX is made in the USA and designed to be one of the easiest to use PC compatibles ever. And it's priced for the home. Just how easy is it? Turn it on, it's ready to go. The whole family can use it for education, games, and budgeting. We even give you seven programs to get started, including word processing, filing, and spreadsheet. Easy enough, no better value. Tandy Computers, because there is no better value. Only at Radio Shack. Too many people think a spark plug's a spark plug. Well, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs like rounds in a chamber, firing up to 30 times a second for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. Now get up to $7 back on AC filters and plugs. See your retailer for details. It's as though the Cardinals, the Big Red, were in a dream world out here in the early going in San Diego. This will be the third time they've received a Vince Abbott kickoff. They have done nothing on either of the kickoff returns, and both times as they started from scrimmage could get nothing done. That last drive, four plays to cover 15 yards. And with a fellow like Fouts, who is capable of creating even more points, it's going to be a long afternoon for the Cardinals unless they change it around quickly. Sikahama takes it on the 11 to the 15 to the 20 and out to the 24 yard line. The cards will go from there. Pete Holohan, a good special teams player and tight end made the tackle. Well, here comes Lomax, Jack, and he's going to have to be patient here. This might be the most adversity he's faced all year. You know, he went through a tough offseason where he had some problems with Gene Stallings. He wouldn't go to the mini camp. He was almost traded on the day of the draft, but he's played great. He won the job back, but this might be outside of trying to finish off Dallas in the closing minutes last year, trying to get this team going down 14-0 in the opening minutes. Let's see how the Cardinals approach it with Farrell in motion and how they set up Novacek on the right side and they start green in motion and here comes Stump Mitchell outside and he got a block from Farrell and some good yards and that's what you would call a patient play with Billy Ray Smith making the tackle yeah well Lomax right here Jack has to have some help he has to get the running game going because San Diego as we said coming into the show is just going to line up and go after him. Now in the first couple of series they got pressure there and of course he also got the bad snap from center so he hasn't had much help yet. He needs either a run or he needs to go right here to a guy like Roy Green and make a big play. Second and two a fake to Mitchell and Lomax looks for a first down and he gets it to Green coming back out to the 44 yard line. They have to lay off a green when he sprints out like that. That's a 12 yard pickup. And a first down. Coverage by Martin Bayless and Danny Walters. Danny Walters starting on the corner despite some problems he's had here this week. And Will McDonough will fill you in on that. The ball's at the St. Louis 44. A good block by Novacek on that last play. Novacek sets up on a wing right. First down call and a give to Farrell and he follows sharp and used the blocks well and he got about four yards out near midfield. We're down to eight minutes left in the first quarter in San Diego quickly on top 14 to nothing. Well, you get Mike Charles down on the play the nose tackle for the Chargers uh, Jack and if they lose him they might be in a little bit of trouble because they're not that tough on the defensive line to start with they picked him up during during the training camp and they put him in there and last week he made 14 tackles last year he played nine games and only made eight tackles. Here are some finals Atlanta upset Washington by one Philadelphia leading by 10 over New Orleans in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter Cleveland running away from Pittsburgh 34 to 10. And a final score the 49ers by one they trailed throughout most of the game defeated Cincinnati and handed the Bengals their first loss. And the 49ers are one and one. Miami wins by 13 over Indianapolis. And in the fourth quarter, it is Houston hanging on, trying to win their second game. They lead by three. And in overtime, Denver and Green Bay. Who would have figured that one? And Green Bay was ahead throughout most of the game. There's Charles. Mike Charles going to the sideline. He's their nose tackle. He's replaced by Chuck Ian, E H I N. And it is a second down play for the Cardinals. 
second and five. After Farrell picked up five yards. Ball at the St. Louis 49. Romag stepped up nicely and it is dropped. And it could have been taken in by Roy Green. He was down there and he had the ball in his hands. That doesn't happen to him very often, but that one hurt inside the San Diego 20. That's where the Cardinals are going to beat San Diego if they win this game today. Yeah, they got to go to Green. You know, uh, Green is considered by other people in the league. I talked to one of the general managers in the, in the league uh, this week and he, about these two teams, and he said to me, Roy Green is one of the five best offensive players in the game. One of the guys you really got to pay attention. San Diego said they were going to try to double cover him all afternoon because they respect him so much. John Holmes is the third wide receiver for St. Louis, third and five. Out of the shotgun. Quickie over the middle and a first down catch by Green who atoned for the drop. At the San Diego 39, a 12 yard pickup. Boy, that pass was hard to stop. Well, he, Green looks like he's struggling a little bit, Jack. You know, he dropped the ball to play before that when he looked like he had the catch. And that one there, even though the ball was thrown fairly well, he had the defensive guy five yards back off him in a, in a situation where he would normally catch the ball and advance it. And he went down under his own steam like he just wanted to make sure he had the ball. I think it was thrown so hard he wanted to make sure he just <laughs> caught it. First down at the San Diego 39. was deflected as he tried to flare it out to Stump Mitchell. Pretty good penetration by the Chargers. Who was that, Will? That's Chip Banks, and that's what they want him to do. Lee Williams was putting on a big rush, number 99, and Banks got his hand on the ball. Here he comes from the weak side now. Watch him. He gets right in the face. He pushes the tackle right back into the face of Neil Lomax. See, with Cleveland, where he's played since he's been a pro football, they had him on the left side and they didn't blitz him a lot. San Diego changed around and put him on the weak side or to the blind side of the quarterback and that's the way they like to bring it. Second and ten. Farrell on a wing. Novacek sets up on the right side. Omax drops it out here incomplete. He just threw that ball away smartly and it's third and ten. He had Billy Ray Smith and Chip Banks on top of him. And this linebacker pressure is pretty heavy from the Chargers. He was very lucky that Jim Tunney didn't call that simply grounding the ball because there was nobody over there. One of the problems on that particular call is that only the referee can call grounding and he's so busy protecting the quarterback he doesn't see the flight of the ball. That's exactly right and that's what Tunney did and Tunney's one of the best in the league. That's what he did. He was watching to see what was going to happen to the quarterback. That's what and that's Saunders. why that's why you see Saunders yelling him. Hey this is right in front of you. How can you not call that. There wasn't a receiver in the area. Ron Wolfley is in to help with the blocking on third and ten St. Louis. From the Chargers 39 four man rush. Oh and dropped by Holmes that would have been a first down. What a terrible drop that was. I mean it was head high. Hey, Jack I was watching the warm ups before the game and because we had talked to some people from St. Louis and they said you know Don Holmes was like on the verge of being cut except in the last preseason game or one of the late preseason games against Chicago he made two great catches on his but back. he was struggling. Yeah. On his here he, but he was dropping the ball in practice. I know that one time I watched him, he sort of held it for five seconds to say, this is how I catch it. This is the second punt of the day by Greg Cater. He angles for the sideline. And it does go out of bounds. It'll be inside the 20. And they mark it down at the San Diego 11-yard line, a 28-yard punt, but quite effective. And Fouts and company go from their own 11 with a 14-0 lead. Today, many investors follow a rather unproductive direction, one that leads to making no investment decision at all. But fortunately, there's a way to make investment decisions easier, the Oppenheimer Opportunity, a family of mutual funds with an outstanding record of long-term performance. So to follow a more gratifying course, simply consult a financial advisor to help you select the right Oppenheimer Opportunity. It takes the frustration out of investing. Listen, there's another reporter I gotta talk to. Well, you scooped me again. Jones, I didn't know you could read. Where are you off to? The airport. Don't bother. I called. Our flight's canceled. Some mechanical thing. Mm-mm. 
Your flight's canceled. I'm on American. American? Where are you going, anyway? You read all about it in tomorrow's paper. When you're something special, people know it. I'm here having a couple of Miller Lights with the world's funniest tennis coach, Jan Tyriak. <laughs> this guy's a million laughs. Hey, remember the one you told me about the chicken and the tennis ball? <laughs> that just cracked me up. Here, have another Miller Lite. Yeah, light tastes great and it's less filling. And you don't want to get filled up when you're having as good a time as we are. Right, Jan? <laughs> For serious beer drinkers, there's only one light beer. Miller Lite. Oh, stop it, man. You're killing me. <laughs> Fifth-ranked Ohio State and their Heisman hopeful Chris Spielman collide with fourth-ranked LSU. Two national powers next Saturday on CBS Sports. Saturday, CBS Sports has a good college football matchup for you. Number five, Ohio State taking on number four, LSU. Ohio State beat Oregon. LSU won over Rice. It'll be a good running game presented by both clubs. And you'll see it starting at 2.30 Eastern Time next Saturday on CBS. From the 11, here's a give to the big fullback, Spencer, who's from Ohio State. And he's out near the 15-yard line with a three-yard gain. Tackled by Curtis Greer. What a story that Curtis Greer is for the Cardinals. On injured reserve last year. And there's Spencer. He is a big back, 230 pounds. E.J. Jr. comes out and Travis Curtis is the extra defensive back for St. Louis second and seven. Yep. Anderson the lone setback and a throw by Fouts. And the pass is caught by Winslow the tight end and that's a first down he always knows how deep to go. Well the tough part about trying to play against Dan Fouts is he has as well as any quarterback in football he throws the ball on time. We talked to him yesterday. He said he throws to a spot. He said I throw to a spot, and my receivers better get there, and they better be looking. And that's why it makes it very difficult to play against Fouts. He's different than any other quarterback in the league. The other guys throws the receivers. He throws on time and to a spot. And the defensive backs don't have time to recover. So all the Chargers have come from their 11 out to the 22-yard line, and straight ahead is Anderson. His power carries him out near the 26-yard line. Gary Anderson for five. Curtis Greer the tackler again Curtis is number 75 will and you have to admire what he has done well you admire any guy who's told by the doctors after two knee operations listen we think you might be better off not to play again he had a guaranteed contract he didn't have to play but he said hey I want to play I want to be a football player and he came back and he had a very fine game against Dallas last week second down and five Anderson the setback Chandler goes in motion. Here is a toss to Anderson and a good tackle was made from the outside near the 30 yard line a three yard pickup Noga the linebacker helped by Cedric Mack made the tackle with four and a half minutes left in the first quarter and it's 14 to nothing Chargers and a critical down coming up here for San Diego third down and two Punt return for a touchdown and then a recovered fumble turned into seven. Jamie Holland is the extra wide receiver. Chargers on third down throw and it's incomplete. It's a problem of throwing on third down. You would think with a guy like Anderson and a big back like Spencer they could pound it out. Well you know San Diego's the kind even on first down their percentages they throw more than 50 percent. And once they get by first down, even third and shot, they still throw. That's been their history. As long as they had fouls, they'd rather throw for it rather than try to run it. Good pressure on that pass play by Freddie Joe Nunn, Clasby, Duda, and Curtis Greer. And Ralph Mozienko is doing the punting. And he kicks the ball deep, very deep to Sikahema, who took it on the 28-yard line, back to the 30. 30 near the 30 yard line 28 yard line 52 yard punt by Mojenko and a 10 yard return by Sika Hammond despite the long punt there was very good coverage timeout call 354 left in the first quarter Chargers leading 14 to nothing the Cardinals have the ball 52 yards You're rocking down the highway. Keep your engine rolling with a motor oil specially formulated for your car. Valvoline has high performance formulas for turbo cars, four cylinder cars, hard driven cars, all cars. Oh, 
Valvoline. Motor oil is not just motor oil. Fans, please. Mr. Garfield, welcome to Embassy Suites Hotel. My room. Oh, all our rooms are really two-room suites for the price of a single room. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. The living room, sir. Love what you've done with this room. The bedroom. This is great. I need my space. And of course, you'll want to take advantage of Embassy Suites free breakfast. Food. Served every morning. At Embassy Suites, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. I resemble that remark. Warm moments on a cold winter night. Good conversation, easy and light. Now how about something for your appetite? Let our gentle flame cook up something right. Warm moments for those warm, warm moments. Nothing warms you like gas. Warm is what natural gas is all about. Clean, efficient. In fact, America's best energy value. Shouldn't it be in your home? Nothing warms you like gas. Well, St. Louis gets the ball again. The last time they had it, they started to drive on their 32. Went rather deep into Charger territory, but had to punt again. Now they start at their own 28. And they can't afford any mistakes down here. A toss to Mitchell. Good kick out block by Bostick, and Mitchell gets three yards on the play. We have some scores for you out here on the West Coast. So we have a lot of late scores and final scores. Philadelphia 27 17 over New Orleans. So each of those teams is one and one. And Cleveland wins 34 to 10 over Pittsburgh. And each of those teams have won one, lost one. And the Vikings try for their second victory. Jump ahead against the Rams. And the Raiders ahead of the Lions in the first quarter. Second and seven. Kennard still at center for the Cards. Carroll in motion. Fake to Mitchell. Stump Mitchell tried to block Angelo Snipes, the linebacker, and Snipes went around him as though he wasn't even there. Well, that's a tough thing now when you try to have a, a running back block a linebacker. You know, when you were breaking all those guys in in this business, Jack, you know, they all used to say, well, it's the big thing to get the running back out of the backfield. Watch the pressure. It's quickness and speed. The linebackers are so big nowadays that a smaller back like Mitchell really can't do the job. And this is what defenses now try to do. They take the big linebackers and get them on those offensive backs, knowing the backs really can't handle it. With a loss of seven, third and 14, and timeout called by the Big Red. 2.52 left in the first quarter. And Lomax didn't want to misfire on this third down and long play, third and 14. So he calls time. First score of the game came on a punt return, then a fumble, then another Charger touchdown, and a close-up look at Roy Green. Well, he's the guy the Cardinals have to get into the game. I mean, he is the most respected offensive player that the Cardinals have. Now, in the last drive, he made a key drop that would have been a big play and, and might have helped the Cardinals sort of break out of the slump they're in here at the beginning of the game. But they tell me last week, now I didn't see the game, the same thing happened against Dallas. He had a big drop at the beginning of the game, but then he finished off the game making big plays. He has been a big play all of his life, and the St. Louis people were telling us last night, when he was injured last year, we were not the same offensive team we had had in the year before when he could play for us. Now that he's back in the lineup, they think they can score points again. But to me, early on in this game, he looks like he's fighting the ball, Jack. He really doesn't look like he's comfortable yet. Angelo Snipes was credited with that sack, his first ever in the NFL, as he got Lomax, and Lomax was sacked for the first time today, fourth time this year. Could you live out here, Will McDonough? Yeah, I'd love to live out here because I'm just taking up golf, and you really can't do that too well in Boston in the wintertime. I think what we get to look for here, and I wonder if this is why Lomax went to the bench. The previous two possessions, when they have had third down, and Lomax went into a shotgun formation, the snap was not good. One time he fumbled it, it set up the second touchdown. The last time around it was knee high. Now this time he's coming out in third and long, and he's going under center. Now here he goes back. Kanata is still in the game. And it is third down and long for the Cardinals, third and 14. Lomax airs it out, and there's Roy Green. And he caught it. And out of bounds inside the 20-yard line at the 19. 
You talk about a rainbow. Vincey Glenn bumped him out of bounds at the 19, a big play. And they had two guys on him. I mean, they gave him the double coverage. They rolled to his side of the field. And third and long, what's it? They get one guy up tight. He's going to run with him. Now they're going to try to bring the safety man over with him. But the safety man doesn't get in the play. He's too late. Here he comes. Well, you can't do that to Roy Green. You can't make that kind of mistake. He's going to burn you. And had the ball been thrown another step deeper, he might not have been caught. He had to slow down a little bit to catch that. When that ball was coming in, he was even with the defensive back, and then he just turned it on and pulled away from it. Gil Bird was trying to cover him. It's a first down at the 19-yard line. Motion by Farrell. Farrell leading the blocking for Mitchell. He slides inside the 15-yard line. And the Cardinals trailing by 14 here. Should not be content with three points. They need a touchdown to get back into this game. Well, I think if they don't panic, and I think if they keep their poise, they should have done well on the last drive. They had two big drops. Now again, they're making the plays. They're moving the ball. And I think if they just keep their poise and don't do anything radical, they can come back and get right in this ball game because you can see if they just execute, they can move the ball against San Diego. And they expect to be able to beat San Diego deep. Novacek sets up on the the left side Farrell and Mitchell in the backfield now Roy Green in motion and here's Mitchell the other way and he avoided a tackle the linebacker Snipes got in Mitchell got away from him but Snipes got some help a one yard pickup and Mitchell a little slow getting up I wonder if the heat is going to take a toll here this afternoon well down on the field before the game Steve Wattmeyer the general manager of the Chargers said this was a very hot day for San Diego. I thought this might work in San Diego's favor, but the Cardinal people point out, hey, we trained in Memphis, Tennessee. There's humidity down there. Out here, it's nice and cool, so if the heat should help anybody, it should be us coming right out of training camp. Third and three. Minute and 20 left in the first quarter. And Lomax had trouble getting the ball over the defender. It was the penetration that caused the poor throw, and it's fourth down. Chip Banks was on top of him again. Lomax has played well and it's not going to look that way in the stats but when he's had time to set up and throw he's thrown the ball well he's picked the right receiver he's done the job but his problem is his blockers particularly his backs can handle the blitzing so far of the linebackers they get right in his face where he's got to dump it off or in that case if he had time one more second he could have made the play he is five out of eleven here's gallery trying a 30 yard field goal with Cliff Stout holding the ball Michael Moore is snapping it. Gallery is one for one. Good snap, good placement. And no good. No good. So Gallery missed from 30 yards. Now these Cardinals have had six kickers in the last two years. They've been pleased with Gallery to this point, but he just blew one. Well, Gene Stallings, we're talking to him last night, but what did he say to us? He said, we get a kid Gallery, he's got a great leg. Five times he kicked off last week, forward in the end zone. But they worry about him because in practice, he hasn't been that accurate. He's got a great leg. He's a great kid. And even mentioned, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he went in there tomorrow and because of his lack of experience, missed a close one. And that was That's what he what said last happened. night. So the ball comes to the San Diego 20-yard line, and Fouts starts from there. First down pass. He had good protection. The pass, even though it was lobbed out there, is caught by Chandler. Well, they were playing loose on him and a big pickup. Cedric Mack, number 47, was covering 16 yards. That's Chandler's first catch of the year. Can you believe that? He's a guy that some people might uh, consider someday for the Hall of Fame. He's got great numbers. But in reality, Jack, he's slowing down. He doesn't have the speed he used to have. Even if San Diego coaches mention that, if you get a real good corner, you can cover a man to man and take him out of the offense. He's got the moves. The ball's at the 36. Here's a toss to Anderson. Big blocking up front. And the tackle was made by Lonnie Young, the free safety after a seven yard game. Less than a minute remaining in the first quarter, 14 to nothing in favor of the Chargers. I think that is a seven yard game. Out to the San Diego 43. Anderson the setback and he goes in a misdirection play goes to the 45 Spencer the lead back came to the left but Anderson thought he saw something on the right side that's going to make it third down and one. 
Noga was there along with Freddie Joan Nunn. And that might be the last play of the first quarter. The Chargers do not have to snap the ball. Nor are they going to do so. And so the Chargers will have a 14 point lead at the end of the first period. They had an 81 yard punt return by Lionel James. They recovered a Cardinal fumble and Gary Anderson plunged over from five yards out. Cardinals have missed a field goal. They've been blank 14 nothing Chargers. If you think Baby M has caused the stir, wait till you hear about Baby's M and M. 60 minutes was there before they were born. A brand new season starts tonight on CBS. I'm Gene Stallings, head coach of the National Football League St. Louis Cardinals. Over the years, I've coached some of the greatest athletes in the NFL, and I know the rewards of victory. But none have been more important to me than my work with this young man, John. When he was born, he was diagnosed to have Down syndrome. In some ways, he would never be like other children. For him, there would never be a chance to play in the National Football League. But over the years, I've seen him grow. He's 24 years old now, and his progress is measured with little victories. The times that we spend together are very special to me. John made this for me, and he made it with a great deal of love, the same kind of love that I have for him. Because you see, John is my son. You ready, Johnny? Let's go right. When you support the United Way, you're saying to people like John, don't give up. We'll give you a helping hand. You can make it. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Centers. American Airlines, something special in the air. And by Oppenheimer Funds, the Oppenheimer opportunity. It takes the frustration out of investing. We start the second quarter at Jack Murphy Stadium. San Diego has a 14 0 lead and the ball at their own 45. Third and one. Will McDonough and Jack Buck with you. Chargers put in Barry Redden, the longtime Ram fullback, on third and short. With Gary Anderson, the tailback. So they have Spencer, Redden, and Anderson. Two tight ends, Cedars and Winslow. And over the top goes Anderson. That's his specialty. That's a first down out to the 47 yard line. And a two yard gain and a first down. Danny Fouts has had it his own way in this first quarter in the beginning of this game, Jack, because his team has done the job for him. He's had great field position. He could use the plays he wanted it to use. He was telling us yesterday the only thing different about this year in the past, he has a new offensive coordinator. Roger Theta and trying to read each other's mind like when Theta sends in a play what does he really want he says that's the only problem he's having so far this year first down Cardinals haven't blitzed much it's a four man rush now and Fouts got rid of it in a hurry picked off by Chandler Chandler has lost some speed but he still has the moves and Anthony Bell tackled him number 55 six yard game. Chandler doesn't mind going over the middle. Now, the good thing about having a Chandler a, a playing with a guy a long time, all great quarterbacks like to have one guy that's been with them a long time, like Unitas and Barry and a, a Namath and Maynard, or guys like that. Because when the thing breaks down, it broke down a little bit there for Fouts, but he knew where Chandler was going to be, and he just side-armed the ball and makes a positive play out of what, what could have been a bad situation. Chandler's to the right. Hold a hand in motion and a toss to Spencer. And a good Cardinal defense that time stops the play at the St. Louis 45 and another third and one coming up. Third down and one. The tackler was Curtis Greer. Cedric Mack up from the corner to force. Again, they put in um, the big backs, Barry Redden. They have a lot of beef back there when they have Anderson, Spencer, and Redden, and that's what they'll have. See if Anderson goes over the top or is he in the no he's out of the game, right? Third down and a long yard and a toss to Spencer. He gets very close and gets a first down with his forward progress. He carried Lonnie Young with him and Spencer wouldn't be taken down. A two yard gain and a first down. And the Cardinals don't have much to brag about here in the game with 13 minutes left in the half and the Chargers. Two are doing pretty well. The Chargers are doing what we talked about at the beginning of the show. They're calling plays now so they don't get in trouble. 
They're running the ball, running time off the clock, sitting on the lead, and throwing short passes, throwing on time. Winslow lines up on the right side. Spencer in motion. Swing pass to Anderson. And he is touched down by Leonard Smith, but that is a first down. He slipped down as he made his cut, and that was an 11 yard gain. That Anderson is terrific, man. He can block, run, and catch. Watch the blitz. He catches them all inside. All he's got to do is dunk the ball right out here to Anderson. Nobody covers Anderson because they were blitzing. He just slid out. Fortunately for St. Louis, he wasn't in the middle of the field because if he's in the middle of the field, he could have taken that one all away. When he cut, the turf gave out underneath him. This fellow grew up in uh, Columbia, Missouri. His mother works at the University of Missouri. First down. Pass to Anderson. Good blocking. He used it and went to the 25, and they're tearing up the Cardinals up front right now. Tackled by Travis Curtis and Nico Noga. Seven-yard gain. He may be from Missouri, but he doesn't have to show any anybody in this league anything. They made he's made believers out of them since he came over from the USFL. He is one of the finest backs in this league, and he's probably the most versatile player. And we talked to his coach yesterday said hey we can't just play him as a, a wide receiver even though it go to the Pro Bowl he'd only catch five passes a game we want him to handle the ball 15 times second down and three here's an inside handoff to Anderson and a very good tackle was made by St. Louis for Leonard Smith Smith had 12 tackles last week a loss of a yard and it's third down and four well when you talk about great players you have to talk about Leonard Smith that was Talking earlier this year to Bill Parcells, the coach of the Giants, they play the Cardinals twice every year. He said Leonard Smith is one of the top five defensive players in pro football, but nobody hears that much about him because you don't hear that much about a safety net. If you're talking pure talent and making plays, this guy's right up there with anybody. Third down for the Chargers. Jamie Holland is their third wide receiver, and Fouts goes for six. Touchdown. Chandler was there. He had two men on him, but a 26-yard touchdown play as neither one of the defenders ever saw the ball. Well, you talk about great adjustments. This was a great adjustment from the quarterback Fouts to the receiver Chandler. Fouts couldn't go to his primary receiver. He pump faked. That slowed down the two defensive backs for St. Louis for a second. Then he threw it back out there. Like you said, they had their back turn, and Chandler just went up and took the ball away from him. That was Cedric Mack and John Preston. And that makes it 20 to nothing with 10.44 remaining in the half. And the extra point is good. 21 to nothing. People thought this was going to be a rather even game. Now, that was a good drive by the Chargers after they took advantage of two big breaks. Sometimes it seems as if your air conditioning bills are going through the roof. But the Owens Corning Attic Blanket will help keep the cool air in. Which can save you money in the years ahead and leave you sitting pretty. Owens Corning, we put your house in the pink. When you're in the market for an imported luxury sedan, you're in among cars costing serious, very serious money. And just when there seems no end, Mitsubishi introduces the new Galant Sigma with a wealth of features including 3-liter V6 power and ABS anti-lock braking, all for well under $20,000. The new Galant Sigma, a serious luxury sedan at a price that's not too serious. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. Will bounces into his drop. Now look at his head. He's looking right. He wants something to the right side of the field. He doesn't see it. He looks around. Watch the pump fake. This slows down the two. St. Louis defensive back. Now he throws. Watch the great adjustment by Chandler. See? 
he had turned his body completely around. Actually, Fouts threw the ball on the right on the wrong side of him, so he had to adjust in the air to make the play. Now the kick to Sikahema from the two-yard line. Sikahema blowing through across the 30 with a very good return. And the downfield tackle was made by Angelo Snipes. 29-yard return. After the missed field goal, San Diego went 11 plays, 80 yards, 26-yard touchdown pass to lead 21 to nothing. And Fouts, by the way, is five out of six, 67 yards and a touchdown. Now the Cardinals have the ball at their 31-yard line. Here's a fake draw. And the linebacker banks sacks Lomax for a big loss, the second sack. He didn't go for the fake at all, did he? They just can't handle Banks today. He's just blowing by people. I don't know if it's missed assignments or not. That had to be. Somebody is supposed to be there even to try to slow him down. He just split right between well, the two uh, linemen. Yeah, and what happens is, you know, Lomax is not a mobile guy. He's been sacked more than any other quarterback in the last two years. So once that happens, he can't run away from trouble. I bet Chip Banks, even though he's maybe 30 or 40 pounds heavy, is faster than him. It is second down and 18. swing pass out here gets very little under the circumstances with Farrell catching the ball that time Luis Sharp picked up Chip Banks coming in that was a five yard gain third and long tackle by Martin Bayless and the linebacker Gary Plummer Lomax having a tough afternoon along with everybody else on the Cardinal team. Yeah, but I, Jack, I really don't put it on him because he just yet hasn't had a chance. When he's had a chance, he's thrown it. We've seen a couple of drops. But other than that, he's been pressured all the time. Third down and 13. Out of the shotgun with Kennard to center. Four-man run. Four-man rush. And the pass was caught by Roy Green. Now he apparently came back and missed getting a first down. It's going to be fourth and one. <laughs> right, Jack. When he caught the ball, he had the first, he had down. The first down. You know, and it wasn't a case of uh, him getting driven backwards. He took the step back. If he just stood there and took the hit from the defensive back, he would have had the first down. Now let's see what kind of forward progress they give him. The ball is at the 40. It's fourth and one, and the Cardinals are going to go for it. They're one out of one on fourth down in their previous game. Now the crowd gets into it. It's trailing 21 to nothing. The Cardinals want to keep the ball. They have Mitchell and Wolfley in there, and the along with Farrell. Mitchell gets it. Mitchell made sure with a good takeoff from his right foot. Going out near the 43 yard line, so the Cardinals keep the ball. They want to get on the board before the halftime. We have 8 10 left in the half. Well, it's a good call by Stallings. He figures down the way he's down. He better do something to get his team going, give him a little confidence. You know, one thing there is San Diego, I don't think for a while really didn't believe it. They didn't substitute and put their short yardage defense on the field. They had four defensive backs out there, and they really couldn't plug all the holes, so that gave St. Louis a chance to make it. And a first down. Smith is to the right. We haven't seen much of JT. Roy Green to the left. Farrell in motion, running with Mitchell, and he is knocked down in a big hurry. The nose tackle, Mike Charles, really botched things up by making the penetration that he did. Here's what's transpired so far. We have 7.30 left in the half here. Cardinals punted the first time they had it. Lionel James, 81 yards on the return, and then the Cardinals fumbled, and Billy Ray Smith recovered, and Fouts set up Anderson. It got the touchdown run, and then the pass a moment ago to Chandler from Fouts, and it's 21 to nothing. Meanwhile, the Cardinals have missed a field goal, and they have second and nine here. And he overthrew Mitchell. Incomplete. Third down. Now that was Lomax's fault. He had Lee Williams coming in on top of him, but he had time, and that was a bad pitch. Third and nine. They've gone deep only a couple of times here, and San Diego is suspect in their secondary. 
St. Louis is only two out of seven on third down and they were only four out of 14 last week so they're not a very good third down team at this point. Seven oh three left in the half. Third and nine. Low snap again. But the pass is caught in full stride by Green. Green is out of bounds near the 20 yard line at the 21. Bensie Glenn bumped him out of bounds. And Green was in the middle of that pattern and was in full stride when he caught that 36 yard pass. Well, it's an all out blitz. They get eight guys coming, even though it's the third low snap that Lomax had a handle in the shotgun. Here comes Green across the field. Man to man coverage. They had to cover him because everybody else is blitzing. And when you do that to Roy Green and you don't get there to Neil Lomax, you're going to pay for it. And they just paid for it. To the 21 of the Chargers. Green gets a little breather. He likes this turf field. The Astor turf bothers him a lot. He's caught five. And 129 yards. Don Holmes is the wide receiver at the moment. He comes in motion. Here is a delay to Mitchell, a couple of blockers, including Bostick, and he gets some yards. Joe Bostick, number 71, was leading the play. 647 left in the half. Tackle by Ty Allard. Mitchell got five. Ty Allard. Inside linebacker, the tackler. There's Gene Stallings. He felt pretty good about coming into this game, but look at him. He's down 21 to nothing. Well, when you get down right off the bat on a putt and return like that, and you get poor field position like they did at the beginning of the game, you can't do the things you want to do. You know, you can't get into your game plan when you're down 14 to nothing. The ball at the 16. There's Al Saunders, shirt and tie and all. Enjoying the lead, but not this current Cardinal drive. Novacek sets up on the left side, and Holmes comes in motion. Here's a give to Mitchell. Tripped up, slowed down, gets outside, gets a block. He's to the 10. Going to be third down and about a yard. That was a six-yard gain. Billy Ray Smith, Vincey Glenn, ta Vincey Glenn tackled it. And he might have got a first down. He did. And set it down just outside the 10. 6-15 left in the half. 21 to nothing Chargers. It's hot out there today. You can see it. It's starting to take its toll already. First and 10. It is not first and goal. The blitz is on again. It's picked up and the pass is thrown away. Roy Green had slipped down. It's wet in the end zone down. Yeah, but again, it looked like a mental mistake about the only guy in the pattern was green and he slipped down in the back of the end zone. And that's when Lomax threw it away in at second and ten. I have a hunch we might see something of JT Smith right here. He's number 84 over on the right side and in the slot. And Lomax swings it out here and he overthrew Mitchell. Coming up to meet him was the safety man, Martin Bayless. Lee Williams was putting on pressure and it's third and ten. Cardinals misfiring on a golden opportunity here. 555 remaining in the first half. Cardinal offensive line is Sharp, Bostic, Kennard, Lance Smith, and Tootie Robbins. Mitchell goes out. Now Roy Green is in the slot. A.T. Smith wide right, Don Holmes to the left. The blitz is on again, and another low snap and another shot. Barry Kennard with his fourth bad snap, and that's the third time they have sacked Lomax. And Lomax, in disgust when the play was all over, picked up the ball and fired into the ground. Technically, that's a penalty in this league, but I think Jim Tunney felt so he bad felt for the him. same he said, way. He said, Jay, hey, I don't blame you, kid. Go ahead. Now he's talking to his center. He said, hey, listen, that's a double play ball. That's a 6 4 3 you just passed back to me. You know, we got to start getting it right. Ball at the San Diego 24. It was on the 10. Here's another field goal try by Jim Gallery. He's 0 for 1 today. Well, he might feel better out here. <laughs> he might be better right trying one from out here than in close. It's a 41 yard try with Stout holding the ball. Maybe it's a fake. San Diego in there very tight. The 42 yard try. And he missed that one. Well, the Cardinals are still blank. 
with 456 remaining in the half. San Diego has the only points and they have 21 of them. 456 left in the half. I'm not going to take the blame for this. I've been a switchboard operator for 14 years, thank you very much. And just because someone at the top brings in a new phone system that's so complicated that no one can operate it, well, that's not my fault. Just to transfer a call, I've got to start three, then seven, then push three of those feature buttons. And even then, I get the wrong person. It's ridiculous. It doesn't take a genius to know that a phone system is causing all that trouble is losing your money. If you ask me, they should just scratch the whole system and, and cut their losses before it's too late. <laughs> In 1973, a small bar served the first light beer. The response was unanimous. Tastes great. Here was a beer with its own special brewing process. Less filling. It's brewed to be light with only the finest quality ingredients. Tastes great. It's less filling. Tastes Today, there are lots of lights around, but none are brewed like Miller Light, and none can match the taste. Tastes great. Less filling. For great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Light. Some of the world's most celebrated milers will take to one of the world's most celebrated streets, the Mercedes Mile on Fifth Avenue, next Saturday on CBS Sports. Any good milers out there want to join in? It's the Mercedes Mile on CBS Sports next Saturday. Some of the most celebrated milers in the world, Steve Ovette, Eamon Coughlin, Steve Scott. The Mercedes Mile on Fifth Avenue, New York, next Saturday at 2 Eastern, 3 Pacific time here on CBS Sports. Ball at their 24, and a quick pass to Lionel James. And a gain of about nine yards. The Cardinal Tackler tried to strip the ball, but couldn't get it done. James is as little as he looks on your screen. He is 5'7", 170 pounds, tackled by E.J. Jr. On that last drive, the Cardinals ran 14 plays, kept the ball for almost six minutes, and came away empty on their second missed field goal of the day. Second and one, Spencer in motion. Anderson a first down, out to the 36. Noga was the tackler on that last play, and it takes us up to four minutes left in the half. And see what Fouts comes up with on first down. And the tight end caught the ball. That's Pete Holohan. He caught three last week in a losing cause, and he's a big guy at 6'4. He went up and caught it. 12 yard pickup. The big difference that we can see here, Will McDonough, is the protection that Fouts is getting. The Cardinals have almost given up trying to get to him with a straight rush. Jack, that's the storyline of this game right now, and what we talked about at the beginning. They can't get to Fouts, but the charges can get to Lomax, and that's why the score is the way it is. And it's a first down at the 48 for San Diego. And it's still a four-man rush. And the pass is caught by Chandler. Chandler over the coverage of Carl Carter. And Fouts is hot. He's pitching a very good game here today. Well, Gene Stallings told us last night in the hotel that they were going to come out and they were going to so show some defenses to San Diego and to Fouts that they hadn't seen either on tape or last year late in the season from the Cubs. I think because the way the score has gone he hasn't had the opportunity to do that. He's just got to st stand back there in defense and hope the Fouts doesn't pick him apart. And he has three safety men in there now on first down so on the ground to Anderson. Oh I do like that for a tackle. You talk about throwing your body in there. And that was the rookie Travis Curtis out of West Virginia. 
folks in St. Louis probably haven't seen much of him, and he stopped him after a two-yard gain. He went in there with abandon, didn't he? Well, that's the 3-5-3. Three, three. I think that's the first time they've used it in the game, and they wanted to use it extensively. But and, here we and have the Fouts went right to the running game when he right saw to, that. When he looked up and he didn't recognize it, he checked off and said, let's take a run and go back and think about it. What are they trying to do out there to us? Now Holahan and Winslow are both in there, two tight ends. Second and eight. Fouts to Spencer. And the linebacker was right there to make a strong hit. Anthony Bell. Pickup of three. Third and long. Stop by number 55, Anthony Bell. Clock running to 240 left in the half. Third wide receiver, Jamie Holland, comes in. Callan Winslow, number 80, the tight end of San Diego, the young man from East St. Louis. His mother and father still live there. His brothers and sisters in the area. His brother lives out in University City. And he is hale and hearty and tough to stop. Colin Scotts is in defensively for St. Louis with a pass rush. They don't get to Fouts, and the pass is incomplete. He overthrew the third receiver, Jamie Holland. So it's fourth down. One of the few times that the Chargers have misfired today. Well, his primary uh, target there was James coming out of the backfield. He circled over the middle. But St. Louis did a good job of picking it up. So then he had to go to his other looks, and he made the toughest throw he had. But just a little bit lower, he might have had the completion. Ralph Mozienko is going to be doing the punting. He averaged almost 44 yards a kick in the first game. This is his second punt today. Gets a good snap. Left-footed kicker. Cardinals will let it go. Chargers could down it. They get a good bounce. Yep. With two minutes left in the half, precisely two minutes left in the half, they have down the ball at the Cardinal five-yard line. So the Cardinals have two minutes to go 95 yards, and Dennis McKnight got downfield to down that punt. Hello. Well, to help pay off that second on his house, Ed has opened up a fruit stand on the side. But the best seller turns out not to be a fruit at all, but the Bartles and James Premium Red Fruit Flavored Cooler. Ed says this is because it tastes like the best of all these fruit flavors put together, only all in a single bottle. So look for Ed's new fruit flavored premium red cooler in the produce section of your store. If it's not there, it'll sure be around someplace. Thank you for your support. Do you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. Be all that you can be. We'll see you after graduation. <laughs> Find your futures in the arms. Congratulations. When you're in the market for an imported luxury sedan, you're in among cars costing serious, very serious money. And just when there seems no end, Mitsubishi introduces the new Galant Sigma with a wealth of features including 3-liter V6 power and ABS anti-lock braking, all for well under $20,000. The new Galant Sigma, a serious luxury sedan at a price that's not too serious. Mitsubishi, suddenly the obvious choice. The skies come alive. The Giants, Sims, the Dolphins, Marino, or the 49ers, Montana. The quarterbacks attack next Sunday on CBS Sports. Well, McDonough, Jack Buck with you from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The ball rests at the Cardinals' six-yard line. Two minutes left in the half. And there's the new center, Mike Ruther. Mike Ruther's wondering what's waiting for him because uh, Derek Kennard had a very, very tough time. Four poor snaps out of shotgun situations that have taken him out of the game. And I think we have to give a little credit to Mike Charles, who was playing across the line from Derek Kennard. Charles is a big guy. He's over 300 pounds. He's sitting right in front of him. He was stuffing it to him every time on third down. And I think after a while, Kennard was worrying more about Charles than he was about the snap. Let's see what kind of a snap we get from Ruther here on first down. Motion by Novacek. Inside handoff to Farrell. Flag goes down. That'll be the first penalty of the day, and the ball is out to the 12 yard line. That's the first penalty, Will. I shouldn't have said anything, Jack. Yeah. When we went to the break, I said we haven't had a penalty in this game, and out comes the flag. Holding. 
And they so threw it, it, they threw it right in front of Tootie Robbins. So it negates a six yard gain. Half the distance, the ball will be at the three. That's the first time. First time we've heard uh, Jim Tunney. Who was that penalty against? Did they give us a number? Was Tootie Robbins. That's where they threw it. You know, when a guy uh, holds, he sort of doesn't want to look the flag, even though they throw it right at his feet. Well, it is first down and 13. Snap had better be a good one in this territory. It is. And incomplete. Uh, came very close to a safety. That ball was touched by Lee Williams. You know what the penalty is for grounding the ball in the end zone, don't you? That's a safety. Came very close to that. So it'll be second and 13. 149 remaining in the half. 21 to nothing, San Diego. San Diego lost their first game to Kansas City 20 to 13 because of a kickoff return by Paul Palmer, and the Cardinals came from behind to defeat Dallas 24 to 13. Second down here. Four man rush. And that's going to be intercepted. Oh, it's broken up by Green, and he darn near caught it. You talk about an aggressive play. Waiting for the ball was Gil Bird, and Green broke it up and almost got it. It was some well, play. I think that's about the only thing Lomax was comfortable with. You get it up there, throw it up in the air. This is a matchup you want. Green adjusts to the ball, almost makes the play. You want Green against Bird, man on man all day long, because Bird is not that fast. Third and 13. J.T. Smith, the other wide receiver, who is quite an accomplished ball catcher, has caught none. He had five last week. Well, St. Louis doesn't get something here. They might have just played themselves out of the game because they're going to have to punt out of the end zone. And uh, San Diego have a minute and a half to knock it back in from good field position. Third and long, and the pass is intercepted. Billy Ray Smith, first and goal. Billy Ray Smith walked in front of it. His dad is here from Arkansas. His father was a great player before him in the National Football League. And San Diego has a chance to make it 28 to nothing. They have plenty of time. 134 remaining in the half. And there's the Lomax, and he was picked off twice last week and gets it today and he knew he made a mistake. Should have thrown that one away also. From the seventh. Lionel James. Touchdown. He got in there. Didn't take him long, did it? They just blew St. Louis right off of the ball. Jack, this is a play that's really unique to the San Diego Chargers. They've developed it. This is sort of like an option play with Lionel James playing the role of an option quarterback. Bouts turns handsome. As you saw the way he's run around the end with the ball in front of him, he was ready to pitch to Anderson or keep it. He decided to keep it. He took it right in the end zone for the score. Extra point try by Vince Abbott. Second touchdown of the day for Lionel James, the first one on an 81-yard punt return. 28 to nothing. 128 remaining in the half. And a holding penalty hurt the Cardinals a while ago. Only Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all on the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. Armor All. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. You're my dream. And now, get new Clean Start free when you buy Armor All Protectant. Clean Start, only from Armor All Products. One word distinguishes the American Express card from the others. Member. Here's a choreography. 
To us, Mr. Ryan is a member. So exciting. And at American Express, our card members are entitled to a world of privileges. Don't stop now. You gotta keep it going all night. We lost our card, our cash. Even our passport. You've come to the right place. I can help you. That's great. Let's play. We stayed an extra day. I'm glad we have the American Express card. She's so lovely. She reminds me of you. Members carry our promise of respect, recognition, unsurpassed personal service. Membership has its privileges. To apply for membership, look for this display and take one. This is the fifth kickoff for San Diego. They lead 28 to nothing with 128 remaining in the half and at halftime we're going to join Brent Musburger and Irv Cross scores and highlights and surprising scores and a crossroads story about the Giants and the Cowboys and last time I looked the Cowboys were leading that game over the New York Giants and Brent will get you right up to date on that there's the last scoring drive what it was was an effective punt then a holding call then an interception this ball bobbled around, picked up by one of the up men across the 30-yard line, and running with the ball is Earl Farrell out near the 35. Dallas leading by three in the second quarter, but Brent will tell you how it got that way. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are being demolished out here, and Lomax back in. He still has plenty of time and two timeouts. The St. Louis 33. I'm still wondering where J.T. Smith fits into the plan here. Because we know they're giving double coverage to Roy Green, who's on the left side. It's a very tough time to use a possession receiver when you're down 28 to nothing. You've got to get it to the guy that makes the big play. Here is a swing pass out to Farrell. The big fullback moves across the 40-yard line. Hurry up offense for St. Louis. See, Dallas leading 10 to 7, second quarter. Brent Musburger and Irv Cross will tell you all about that one and all about the other game. A lot of finals have already been posted. Second down. Lomax got away and it's a first down pass to Smith inside the 40 to the 35. Now St. Louis calls timeout with 51 seconds left in the half. 24 yard game. Lee Williams was after Lomax. He got away from him and completed the pass. And number 25, Betsy Glenn. In 23 yards on a pass play. The Van Patten family loves their cars. And they trust us to take care of them. Every 3,000 miles, we bring them to Jiffy Lube. They change the oil with quality Pennzoil, replace the filter, lube the chassis, fill the important fluids. Check the air filter and wiper blades. Inflate the tires. Vacuum the interior. And wash the windows. 14 quality services in 10 minutes. I'm with no appointment. Welcome to Jiffy Lube. We'll take care of you like family. Cardinals are on the move. They've had two field goal misses of 30 yards and 42 yards. And they're trailing 28 to nothing. They have a first down to the Charger 35. After taking the kickoff. And they moved the ball down the field with J.T. Smith catching his first of the day. Green and Holmes come to the left. Now Holmes goes to the right side. Novacek is on a win. Four-man rush. Lomax steps up and throws and incomplete. Diving in, trying to get it was Vincey Glenn, intended for Holmes, who dropped one earlier. Second and ten. 47 seconds left in the half. San Diego playing it rather loose, uh, very deep back there, Will. Yeah, they're in a prevent defense, which usually just prevents you from stopping the completion, in my, my opinion. I don't know why when you pass rush the guy all day, you get pressure on him, all of a sudden you back off, even if you are ahead 28 to nothing. Ruther snaps the ball. And here they come. And the pass into the end zone is overthrown and incomplete. Tried to get it to Roy Green. And there was good coverage, very tight coverage on him that time. 
MC Glenn and Danny Walters were both there. Walters at number 23 defensively for San Diego. That's quite a story on him. He's yeah. had his problems. He's this had week. his problems in his career and again this week uh, being involved with drugs after the game against uh, last weekend. They come home and uh, he would come out of Kansas City. They picked him up at 3 o'clock the next morning. They charged him. The police did. with driving under. They found drugs on him. They've had him in rehab all week with their team physician and with the league doctor. And then they bring him out to play here again today. Third down and 10. Carol and Mitchell in the backfield. Lean to the left, Smith to the right. Over the middle and short of a first down, caught by the tight end, Novacek. Cardinals have only one timeout remaining. They're going to hang on to it. No, they're going to call it. The Cardinals. That's the last timeout for the Cardinals with 30 seconds left. In the half, it's fourth and one. From Musburger, busy in the studio compiling all those scores. He's put some highlights together for you. And the feature story the Giants and the Cowboys, they're meeting one another this afternoon. And do you think the Giants have a problem after being knocked about by the Bears Monday night, Will McDonough? I, th I thought the Dallas would have more of a problem this year, Jack, because everybody you talk to in pro football that has seen the Cowboys play say they are not the Cowboys. In fact, uh, one of the San Diego people uh, told me he thought now that Dallas was in the bottom five of the league. Talk about the strike, Will. Is there going to be one? There's going to be a strike, Jack, and they'll go out Tuesday, and how soon they come back uh, depends on uh, how much money the players are making. I think what you're going to see is, is guys who are making a big money a guy like uh, Lomax he's out there today for every game he misses he he loses fifty six thousand dollars on the other side of the ball you get Fouts makes seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year every game he misses it's about forty eight thousand it costs him now I don't know how those guys want to stay out game to game to game losing that kind of money it doesn't for the average guy that's not reality particularly since there isn't an issue they want to go to strike about predict how long the strike will last well, I think you're going to see it go about 10 days. I think that the players are convinced that they have to show the owners with a strike, eliminate next week's game. But I think there's going to be an awful lot of pressure to come back with the regulars on October 4th. Fourth down and one for St. Louis. Quarterback sneak, and Lomax picks up the first down. Clock is running. They can't stop it. They line up quickly. Burning 28 to nothing. They get a first down at the 25, and Lomax spiked the ball. That's incomplete. Now they talked about that this year. The quarterback can do that. Just drill it into the ground to stop the clock. That's right. And it, that more or less evolved out of what they do at the end of the games. Instead of simply falling on the ball, right, you can throw it down and do that to stop the clock. You know, it's not an intentional grounding. They did that because, you know, when guys were just falling on the ball at the end of the half or the end of the game, you know, somebody might take a shot at him. This gives the quarterback a chance. He can do that. That's a smart play on Lomax's part. Because he's got to throw it forward, otherwise it'll be a lateral. It's first down here. And he goes up on top in a battle in the end zone. And incomplete. He tried to get the ball to Roy Green again, and Danny Walters was covering him. 13 seconds left in the half. San Diego got 14 points in the first quarter and 14 more in this period. Third down and 10. Here's one down to stop the clock, another one incomplete. And they've been bad on third down today. They were four out of 14 last week and three out of 11 this week. Cardinals need 10 yards to keep the ball, and they go to the other corner, and it is broken up at the last minute. Gilbert got his hand on the ball, which was about to nestle in the arms of Roy Green. It's fourth down, seven seconds left. Well, he's look. He's looking for Green all the way. He just throws the ball out there. I'm surprised you get this kind of coverage again with Green. It looks as though it's going to be completed. Here comes Bird across. He was just laying back there. If he's out in the middle of the field, maybe he would have tried for an interception, Jack. But he figured at that point in time, he just had to knock the ball lucky, away. Pretty lucky to get there as it was. The ball had been thrown another step. It would have been a touchdown. It is fourth down. Seven seconds left in the half. And the Cardinals, who have missed two field goal tries, are going to go for broke. they got to get it in the end zone. I mean, there's no sense not getting in the end zone. You don't have any timeouts left. You've got to get it in the end zone. Defense is very deep. It's still a four-man front. And it is caught, but 
the play ends at the five and time is up. Smith caught it. And the half came to a close at the five yard line. San Diego will receive the second half kickoff and these 53,000 here most of them rooting for the Chargers. Enjoy the action 14 points in each quarter. That's the end of the first half with a score. The Chargers 28 and the St. Louis Cardinals nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. The Bartles and James Premium Wine Cooler Company. And by AT&T, the right choice. When investors wanted to reduce the high risk in high tech, Prudential Beige created Prutech 1 and 2. This has real potential. Select portfolios built on identifying promising products and companies on the leading edge of scientific frontiers. This new process is incredible. A first of its kind for the personal investor and a way to share in the growth available through technologies. All right, let's go. If anyone can show you a more advanced approach towards new and better ways to make money, it's Prudential Beige Securities. Rock solid, market wise. No better value. Right. The new Tandy 1000 TX is made in the USA and has incredible speed at an unbelievably low price. Speed? Six times the speed of the PCXT, so you're more productive at home or work. It's ready to run on a built-in three and a half inch disk drive, and we give you seven PC programs, including word processing, filing, and spreadsheet. That is better value. Tandy Computers, because there is no better value. Only at Radio Shack. Autumn is football, and the champions of autumn are on CBS Sports. Next Saturday, the force of Chris Spielman and fifth-ranked Ohio State collides with fourth-ranked LSU. Next Sunday, it starts with the NFL Today. Then the skies come alive. The Giants, Bill Sims, the Dolphins, Dan Marino, or the 49ers, Joe Montana. The quarterbacks attack. Next weekend, the champions of autumn are on CBS Sports. Everybody, I'm Brett Musburger with Irv Cross. Irv, an upset down in Atlanta. The Falcons stunned the Washington Redskins. They stunned them. You know, Doug Williams threw for three touchdown passes, but they botched an extra point, and that was it. It was. You know, they didn't miss Schrader as a quarterback, but they missed him as a holder on that snap. And 21-20, the Falcons with a win. The rest of the scores for you now. Philadelphia over New Orleans, 27-17. The Eagles forced five turnovers in that game. Cleveland over Pittsburgh, and the final in that game was 34-10, so the Browns go to 1-1. San Francisco, in stunning fashion, beats Cincinnati 27-26. No time left on the clock. Joe Montana throws a 25-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice, and they kick the extra point. Miami over Indianapolis, 23-10. Three more touchdown passes for Dan Marino in that game. Buffalo wins in the final minute. Jim Kelly throws three touchdown passes. A 10-yarder was the winner. That one to Ronnie Harmon. Denver and Green Bay, they slug it out for five quarters, 17-17 in the rain in Milwaukee. A tremendous performance by the Packers in that game. Chicago over Tampa Bay, 23 was the final. Walter Payton, 107 career rushing touchdowns. That breaks Jimmy Brown's standard. Now games in progress out west. The Vikings over the Rams as the Greek predicted, 14-0 there in the second quarter late. Detroit and the Raiders, the Greek didn't predict this one. The Lions, 7 and his Raiders, 6 second quarter. San Diego and St. Louis, as you know, the Chargers, big 28 to nothing in that game so far. Seattle bouncing back from the disappointment of a week ago in Denver, 17-7 over the Chiefs. Dallas and the Giants and the Cowboys stunning the Giants. Irv, what's the story in that game? I'll tell you, injuries and turnovers. Phil Sims in the first half threw so far 10 for 16 for 139 yards and three interceptions. Here's one by Bill Bates. He picks that off, goes 22 yards, setting up the Cowboy touchdown. The Giants are suffering from something they didn't have last year, Brent. Now, who have they lost to injuries? Well, sir? okay, uh, Joe Morris has a concussion, and Chris Godfrey, the starting guard, has a bad knee. He'll probably be out. So they've lost a couple of offensive linemen already this year. And the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Tonight, if you've been starved for baffling mystery, puzzling intrigue, Gripping suspense. Rest easy, Jessica's back.
<laughs> I can't wait. On the season premiere of Murder, she wrote. Then, the story of a man and his wife, a man and his girlfriend, and a problem. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> Dudley Moore, Anne Reinkay, oh. and Amy Irving. Mickey and Maude, tonight on CBS. This is CBS. Welcome back to our studios. As you all know, we face the very real prospect of an NFL strike tomorrow night. Now, in any labor dispute, there are always two sides to the story, but I have to say that my sympathies here are with the players. You know, professional football is more than a game. It's the most violent industry in this country, and with the increases in size and speed, it gets more violent every year. The average career of an NFL player is now down to 3.7 years, which doesn't allow much time to build up a nest egg. So the NFL players definitely need better working conditions and an improved pension plan. But in terms of winning the support of the fans, striking in the midst of a season is the worst possible course of action. There is, I think, another way for the players to get their message across and give their demands the impact they need. They should agree to play the games, all the games. That way, the fans will not be cheated, and all the innocent victims of a strike, from the parking lot attendants to the pretzel vendors, will not be denied their sources of income. But the players' cooperation would stop there. They could refuse to take part in the NFL's well-oiled publicity machine. No interviews for press or television. No public appearances off the field of any kind. No communication whatsoever with the management officials who seek to promote the game and their teams. Now for the sticky issue of free agency. Absolute free agency probably would destroy the fabric of the NFL as we know it. My feeling is that when a Phil Simms, who has a huge contract and ample opportunity to play, takes his team to the Super Bowl, he doesn't necessarily have the right to turn around and offer himself at auction to another franchise. On the other hand, I sympathize with a Doug Williams. He has paid off handsomely as an insurance policy for the Redskins, but at what price to his career? Certainly the Raiders or others could have used him as a starter. He's a prisoner of the system as it now stands. And I suggest coming up with some formula by which the understudies and the non-glamour players could try to better themselves according, of course, to what the market bears. I'm sure there are a lot of other valid suggestions out there, which is precisely my point. Keep the dialogue moving. And with some give and take, a strike that no one wants can be averted. Now let's send you back to the stadium and the games you're enjoying this afternoon on CBS. We're back here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego with a score 28 to nothing in favor of the Chargers. They scored 14 points in the first quarter and then they did the same the second. The Cardinals have shown some ability to move the ball up and down the field. They're piling up some yards but they have missed two field goal attempts and they are blanked on the scoreboard. And the San Diego State University marching band entertains the folks here at the half and their football team is entertaining them as well. CBS Sports coverage of NFL football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Today's harder working four cylinder engines demand extra protection against friction. Valvoline four cylinder formula delivers. To help keep your four-cylinder engine from wearing out, make sure it's Valvoline you're pouring in. Valvoline four-cylinder formula high-performance motor oil. Come on, he's on down, he's on down the road. Motor oil is not just motor oil. Wood Finish by Minwax penetrates deep into wood, so it's easy to get beautiful results. Bring out wood's rich, warm glow with Wood Finish by Minwax. Minwax makes wood beautiful. What a smart person. You bought Sylvania soft white light bulbs, which last 50 hours longer than ordinary soft white bulbs at no extra cost. Sylvania, where the best comes to light. American Red Cross. Who keeps America beautiful to see? Don't you know who? It's you. 